Well, good afternoon and welcome to Community United Methodist Church for our candlelight Christmas Eve worship. We are so glad that you are here to worship with us this afternoon as we celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, at this time, I just wanna say a special welcome if you are new, if you have not been here with us before, we are so glad that you have chosen to worship with us this Christmas Eve. And if you don't know me, I am Katie Harrington, the pastor here at Community United Methodist Church. A couple of announcements. We will not be having worship tomorrow morning um, enjoy your Christmas with your family, but I will post a short little devotion online on Facebook, so be sure to check that out. We will be having worship next week, uh, January 1st, and on January 8th, we'll be having a potluck breakfast after worship to celebrate Epiphany, so we hope that you will come to that. <laughs> Turn to your hymnal, number 231. There is a Christmas prayer there I'm going to pray. Eternal God, by the birth of Jesus Christ, you gave yourself to the world. Grant that, being born in our hearts, you may save us from all our sins and restore within us the image and likeness of our Creator, to whom be everlasting praise and glory, world without end. Amen. Our opening song this morning is going to be O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. It's number 211 in your hymnal. We're going to sing verses 1 through 4. Please stand if you're able.
John 1, 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in Okay, in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him life was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through the world he was made, was made through him. The world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Today, on this Christmas Eve, we light the Christ candle, reminding us of the birth of Christ. At Christmas, Jesus was born as a little baby, the long-awaited Messiah, the Christ child, entered into our world. Light entered into the darkness. God in the flesh came to live and dwell among us. This Christmas, may we unwrap not just presents under a tree, May we unwrap the gift of Christ. May we unwrap the light of Christ, the light breaking into the darkness. And as we are filled with the presence of Christ, may we shine the light of Christ into the darkness of our world. Amen.
You may be seated. Let us pray over our offering. Gracious God, we thank you for all the many blessings that you have given us. Lord, we ask that you would bless this offering, that through it you and your ministries would be glorified, Lord, that people would come to know you and your great love for them. Lord, we ask that you bless this offering, bless the ministry and missions of this church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, we are going to hear the Christmas story told through scripture and song. We'll hear a little bit of the Christmas story, then we'll sing a carol that has to go with kind of what's going on in the story. So uh, hopefully we can all uh, pay attention and know which song is coming up, but we'll help to guide you through that. But our first scripture reading is Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Would you hear the word of the Lord? In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. At this time, we will sing hymn number 230, A Little Town of Bethlehem. And I believe we said the first three verses. scripture reading is going to be from Luke, second chapter, one through five. And actually Luke two, six through seven, sorry. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. Our song we're going to sing now is Away in a Manger. Verses 1, 2, and 3.
Luke 2, 8 through 9. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Hymn number 236, While Shepherds Watched Their Flocks. How many verses? What do we... One, two, and six, I think. Is that right? One, two, and six. I brought up my wrong paper. <laughs> This is Luke chapter six, second chapter, 10 through 12. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He's the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Our song now is 228, He is Born. Verses 1 through 3.
Luke 2, verses 13 through 15. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on peace and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Our ne next hymn is hymn number 240, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, and we'll be singing all of the verses. Scripture verse, it's going to be Luke 16, second chapter, 16 through 20. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told him about the child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen. They're just been thankful and told about. Our next song is going to be hymn number 234, O Come All You Faithful, verses 1 through 3.
Let us pray. Lord, I ask that this message I have prepared would be from you. Use me, Lord, as a vessel. May your Holy Spirit flow through me so that we may hear a message from you. Speak to us this day. Your servants are listening. Amen. So like most children growing up, Christmas was always my favorite holiday. Anyone else relate to that? It still, it still is to this day. Uh, but as a kid, I'll admit, Christmas was especially exciting uh, because of all the gifts under the tree on Christmas morning. I can remember waking up and running with my sisters on Christmas to see what was under the tree. And as a child of a firefighter, I can remember those mornings where if my dad worked Christmas Eve and didn't get off till 7 a.m., our eyes were glued to the window waiting for him to pull in the driveway. We were not allowed out by the Christmas tree till my dad got home. As we got older, there were a few Christmas mornings where my dad had to be at work, so we got up at 5 a.m. to celebrate Christmas. I'm sure many of you have Christmas memories you remember from your childhoods or your children's childhood. And as a kid, Christmas is all about getting gifts. But as I've gotten older, and I'm sure many of you relate, it's so much more joyful to give than to receive. And as much fun as gift giving can be, that truly is not what Christmas is all about. In the busyness of this time of year, it can be easy to forget that this season is not about all the parties and the shopping and the presents under the tree, those, though all those things are wonderful. This season is not about a what, but a who. The season we gather on Christmas, this Christmas Eve, to worship and remember who this day is all about. Jesus, the Son of God, the long-awaited Messiah, the Christ, the Savior of the world. Tonight we heard the Christmas story told through scripture and song. We heard of Mary and Joseph traveling to Bethlehem for a census. We heard of there being no room for them, Jesus being born in a stable and being laid in a manger. We heard of shepherds being the first to hear the good news, angels appearing in the fields, and shepherds coming to worship the baby. Many of us have heard this story from Luke a hundred times. Many of us have sang these carols a hundred times. But there might be some things we have yet to learn about the night that Jesus was born. Mary and Joseph's journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem would have been about 80 miles. Not much for us today, we can easily drive that. But for them, they would have been traveling, walking, and it would have taken about 10 day journey on foot. Imagine that journey walking by foot for 10 days, nine months pregnant. When they get there, there is no room. So they stay in a stable, most likely actually a cave at the bottom of a dwelling. And Jesus is born and he is placed in a manger, a feeding trough for animals. Jesus, the Messiah, the long awaited Christ, the savior of the world was born and laid in a manger where animals eat. What humble beginnings for this baby. Not born to wealthy parents, but humble ones. Not even in their own home, but traveling in a stable where the animals are kept. A manger for the baby's crib. I couldn't help but laugh tonight. I, I feel the Lord is speaking to me um, as things have not gone in the service all, all the way like I thought. We had Isla running up the stairs, me missing some notes, uh, me leaving my paper down there and not knowing what I was reading at one point. But I think that truly is what the night of Christmas would have been like. Nothing like what Mary and Joseph were expecting. Mary was certainly not expecting to deliver not in her hometown, in a place away with other people, not expecting to have her baby laid in a manger for a crib. And yet that is what happened that night. The unexpected, the plans not going the way they were supposed to. And so I couldn't help but laugh as I'm going through the service and hearing the Holy Spirit say to me, the service might not be perfect, but the night Jesus was born wasn't either. And yet that perfect night, that imperfect night, was the most holy night the world has ever known. You see, 2,000 years ago, the greatest miracle occurred. 
God was born as a baby named Jesus, the long-awaited Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one, the savior of the world. The fancy theological word we use in seminary is called the incarnation. Think carne, meat. God came in the flesh, in the meat, in the flesh to dwell and live among us. You see, we have a God who is not comfortable to stay off far and distant and not involved in the things of this world. We have a God who put on flesh, put on skin and came and dwelled among us and lived among us. We have a God who came to be with us. This evening, Jesse read for us from John 1, 14. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And I love, especially if you've ever read from the message, it paraphrases it like this. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. God became flesh and blood in the person of Jesus Christ and moved into the neighborhood. Jesus moved into our neighborhood. I hear people talk a lot about this neighborhood that our church is located in. And I will admit it's not always talked about in the best light. I hear people talk about it not being safe and stories of poverty or drugs or crime in the neighborhood. Many of us may be afraid to go out, especially after dark. But as I hear this news, as I hear the news of the birth of Christ, I am reminded that Jesus is not afraid of our neighborhood. Jesus is not afraid to come and live and dwell among us, even in the places in this world that might feel scary or unsafe. Jesus is not afraid to be with us in our neighborhoods or in the scary war-torn places of this world. Jesus is not afraid to dwell with us. Sometimes our neighborhood or our world can feel dark, but at Christmas we remember that light entered into the darkness. And the story of Jesus' birth doesn't have meaning just for those people 2,000 years ago. The story still has meaning for us today. What are you longing for? The people of Israel were longing for a savior, a Messiah. What are you longing for this Christmas? Jesus wants to meet you in your longing. Jesus wants to bring you hope and love and joy and peace, just as he did as a baby long ago. The good news of Christmas means that we have a God who dwells among us. We have a God who is with us, Emmanuel. We have a God who knows what it's like to experience all the goodness of life, the joy, the laughter, the kindness. But we also have a God who knows what it's like to experience the pain and the struggles of life as well. A God who knows what it's like to be betrayed and denied. A God who knows what it's like to experience their friends die. A God who knows what it is to suffer. We serve a God who is with us and understands our joy and our hope, but also our pain and our struggles. There is nothing no one in this room is going through that Christ does not understand. There is nothing that you are going through that you are going through alone. Christ is with you. We are never alone. Emmanuel, God with us, is always with us. I love in the Christmas story that we heard in Luke's gospel when the angels say, we come to bring you good news for all people, all people. The great news of the birth of Christ is not just for some select few, it is for all people, not just Jews, but Gentiles as well. This is good news for all people, not just good news for rich, but good news for poor as well, not just good news for men, but good news for women as well. This good news is good news for all people of all places, of all races. Rarely in life do we find something is good news for all people. Often when laws are passed, it's often good news for one side, but not the other. When a political candidate wins, it's good, not, good news for those half of the country and bad news for the other half. When your favorite sports team wins, it's good news for you, but if you're on the losing side, it's bad news for you. But the birth of Jesus is good news for all people. There are no losers in the kingdom of God. We are all winners with Jesus, all recipients of the hope and love and joy that Jesus brings. The good news of Jesus is good news for all of us. 
And so may we experience that good news this Christmas, no matter what we are going through. And may we share that good news with the world that desperately needs to hear it. A world that needs to know the good news of Jesus. A world that needs to know that Emmanuel, God with us, is not afraid to come close and dwell with us in the midst of our pain, in the midst of our struggles, but also in the midst of our hope and our joy. A God who is not afraid to move into our neighborhood. A God who is not afraid to move into our world. At Christmas Eve services, we light the Christ candle, that white candle in the middle of the Advent wreath, reminding us that Christ is the light of the world, reminding us that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome the light. Jesus didn't just say, though, that he was the light of the world. He said that we are to be the light of the world as well. So in a little bit, as we have our candlelight service, I'm going to start by lighting from the Christ candle, reminding us that Jesus is the light of the world. But then we will pass that light through the sanctuary, reminding us that we as Christ followers are called to be the light of Christ as well. We too are called to be the light of the world, going out into the world, taking the light of the Christ of Christ with us. So may we shine that light into the darkness. May we shine that light into the darkness, not just though on Christmas Eve and Christmas time, but may we shine that light into the darkness all the days of our lives. May we rejoice that Christ has come. Christ is here with us. We are not alone. Emmanuel, God with us, is here with us. The light of Christ is with us. Even in our imperfect services, even in our imperfect uh, Christmas time at home, Christ is with us. We are not alone. May we shine that light and experience that light. And may that light of Christ bring us great joy. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that you are the light of the world. We thank you that because of you, darkness does not get the final say, but that you are shining your light in the world and the darkness will not overcome it. Lord, on this Christmas Eve, as we are approaching Christmas morning, May we not forget what this time of year is all about. The birth of your son, God in the flesh coming and moving into our neighborhood, moving into our world to dwell among us. Lord, we thank you that you are here with us. We thank you that we are not alone. We ask Lord that as we experience your light this Christmas, that we would shine your light into the world. May we be the light of Christ in a broken and dark world. And may we bring the hope and joy and peace and love of Christ to all we encounter. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So as I said, I'm going to start by lighting my candle from the Christ candle, and then we will spread the light of Christ throughout the sanctuary, singing a silent night.
As we look around this room, may we be reminded of the light of Christ breaking into the darkness this Christmas. May we take the light of Christ and shine it to the world. Our choral response is hymn number 246, Joy to the World. and Merry Christmas, and may you have the joy of a toddler running around the sanctuary. <laughs> Go in peace. Amen. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.